there's a, a, an interesting book called The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath, where they, they talk about what actually is the distinction between passion and purpose in, in a corporate setting, but really any setting. Um, and they actually found that, you know, passion is something that's really private. We have our own things that we're passionate about, our own causes. And that's highly motivating for an individual, but it is not highly motivating for a group of people. And so we actually have to unite around a purpose. And so when a leader can do that and we can, they can say, like you see this a lot in nonprofits or NGOs in general, where they're able to say, you know, our purpose is serving the homeless population of Chicago or whatever it is. Then, you know, even on a day when someone's not feeling so passionate about just running the statistical analysis of whatever they're doing, which is like somehow tangentially related to the mission, but like when you, when you connect to it through the purpose and like what that data could actually allow the, the organization to do, that's when we can kind of get back on board and that's when we can feel invested. I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because certainly I would say some of the some of the company ballrooms that I've sat in, you can you can see that there is a clear disconnect that people don't actually be, in the nicest possible way. They don't actually believe the leader because they think the leader is just there for the profit and the, the benefits mm-hmm. of running a larger entity and so on and doesn't really care about what their people do, but expects them to do it all the same. That it makes total sense when you start to talk about the underlying purpose of something like that how people start to fit because they feel and we come back to this um almost right back to the beginning with with the pair of you it's this idea that you have a common thing that actually glues you together it's almost pure chance that you happen to be in the same business living that part of your life together um and you know certainly the example that you give is, is a great example of that i think how people yeah, just believe more about these things at certain places as opposed to just turning up for the paycheck. And that's the leader as much as the people that work for them, I think. So I have um, one final little area of of questioning around this for you, for me. Um, We've obviously talked about your own journey. We've talked about how clients inspire you along the way in terms of you re-evaluating your own message. Um, Do you find it easier to write for your clients than you do for yourselves? Oh, yes. A million times, yes. (laughs) Oh, good. That's just the same. It's the same for everybody, whatever (laughs) they do. It's always easier projecting my thing onto everybody else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your thing onto everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. When we rewrote our website copy, it took us like three months. Our project (laughs) that would take our clients like a month. Bearing in mind that, that you have this sort of, this background glue and the feeling and the logical side to it yourselves. Yeah, it's um, it's a different process. Um, oh. Let's see, we might have a bit of a lag. Hmm. Let's see, can you hear? Can you hear me? I'm going to test again here. Um, let me just try, let me just try this. Um, 
messaging across different modalities, different platforms um, for different purposes. How do you um, how do you handle that? Do you go down particular paths? Do you have methodologies for each, um, or do you start with a common thread and then adapt? Yeah, so we find that it's important to feel really good about the way that you're conveying the message in a way that feels natural for you. So if you really enjoy video, for instance, leverage that. If you really enjoy sort of short bursts, maybe Twitter's the the place for you. Um, And so I don't know that we feel that it really matters so much whether somebody is... um, focused on a specific platform over another, but just that it's one that feels sustainable for you, one that um, feels good in terms of how you are um, leveraging your strengths. And then from there, it's a matter of um, just repurposing in a way that's high impact for you. Okay, well, I seem to have lost um, sound at my end. So um, I have to say, as much as I regret it, I think we need to just call it a day here because I can't see how I can now lock out without ending the meeting and calling it a day anyway. Um, So I had some other uh, questions that I did have for you of a much more personal nature. Maybe we could pick those up separately um, in your group in the course of the week, once the replay comes out, and we'll just try and dovetail and, and cut an ending on so that we can actually wrap things up and bring it together. Okay. How's that? Sounds good. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed.